Hey guys, here's the uh, sculpin pattern I was talking about. It's a uh, pretty simple tie, nothing crazy. Uh, did look like this, so I just felt like it needed to be overhauled. This really doesn't look like anything special, and I guess you don't need anything special to catch fish sometimes, but I just wanted to add a few things to it. So I changed the materials around from this being a uh, basically mink for the tail, mink palmer through the body, wool head, and some dumbbell eyes. So this is the new pattern that I came up with. Same theory, same concept, just change the materials. I've got rabbit off of a zonker strip for the tail. I've got some medium uh, pearl chenille in tan. And I added some gills, some pectoral fins with Hungarian partridge, a dubbing loop, a rabbit, and Senyo's laser dub in tan and light olive. Whoops. So I'll walk you guys through this really quick. I already filmed this once and I had a focus problem. So I'm hoping that this is a better take. All right. The hook is a 96.74, size eight. And I'm using UTC's 140 and olive. So I'm gonna lay a base here for my eyes to sit on. And once I get that base down, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my thread back to about the quarter mark of the hook shank. Red dumbbell eyes in size small. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these tied in. I don't get too crazy getting these way snugged in, just enough to keep them on the hook and I snug them down a little bit, but I don't go overboard. So just some figure eight wraps, wrap around the base, give her some tension. I think I do this about three times. What I do do is put a bump of thread in front of it thread behind and I'll put my thumbnail right at the base of the eyes on the back side and that allows the, the thread to th uh, slide through and it makes a bump in the back so those eyes are pretty locked in right now bring your thread to the back of the hook tail is rabbit and it's olive I'm cutting this stuff right off the hide. <clears throat> this one just happens to be a uh, Magnum Zonker strip. So, grab a decent clump of that stuff. Try to trim it to make sure that I get the full length out of it as well. Remove a little bit of the fluff. Trim the ends so they're kind of straightened up. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in. I'll take some wraps underneath the tail. This will help keep it from fouling. And go ahead and finish lashing that down, the butt sections, 
and then I come forward with my thread so that's all secure. Come back again. And then I'm going to tie in my chenille. This is what I'm using for the body. It's pearl chenille in medium. It's tan. I don't worry about trimming the ends because I'm going to tie in a pretty good base of this stuff so I can build up the body a little bit. Go ahead and tie that off. Whoops. Got the body set in there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie back on the chenille a little bit. And this is where I'm going to start my dubbing loop. Again, I'm cutting more rabbit off the hide for the dubbing loop. <clears throat> this doesn't take a lot either. Fairly good clump. Take some dubbing wax. Put it out in your dubbing loop. Print all these back. You may have to comb as you go. I'll wrap this up to the uh, back of where the eyes are at.
So I'll take these and uh, I'll split them down the middle on the bottom side of the fly. Hold them back and then tie in over your uh, dubbing loop with the rabbit. So that should separate the uh, rabbit on the bottom unless the belly shine through. Next I'll add my gills. This is a uh, it's STS salmon and steelhead dubbing. It's uh, you guys can use whatever you want. Take a pinch, I'll align the fibers so I can get the length out of them. And then I'll go ahead and place that right in the middle. One loose wrap. Come around again, snug it down, and then I'll tie it back on itself. So I'm doubling it over. Preen that so it kind of stands straight up, and then I'll cut back at an angle. And there's the gills. So I've got my gills in. Uh, before that, I had the dubbing loop of rabbit. And what I did when I paused the video is I went ahead and prepared my uh, Hungarian partridge feathers. And again, these are just the body feathers. Uh, and what I do with them is I put them on a flat surface, not the kitchen table, because the wife would kill me, but I basically brush them with flow, loons flow. And what happens when you brush them out on a flat surface is you get all those ray spines coming through. So that kind of adds to the realism of the fly. So I've got these prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and tie these in. I'm gonna start on my side and it's shiny side back. That just kind of gives the, I don't know if it matters if shiny side needs to be back or not, but what I want is I want these to flare out. So the curvature of the feather is what matters to me here. So a couple loose wraps and then I'm gonna pull on this to get it to the right, right below where I have that feather prepared. And then I'm gonna flip the fly over and I'm gonna do the other side. So the one thing I do like to do with these is I will make a couple of wraps behind each one. That way when they get wet they're going to hold their shape in the water as far as uh, protruding away from the body. Still have the stems on them coming forward with the stems almost to the eye and then I'm going to tie them back on themselves for some durability here and you can just break those off all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some laser dub and this is Senyo's laser dub and tan and I'm going to take a little bit of this for the bottom of the fly, the belly. So I 
grabbing some out of there and I'm going to line all these fibers. And what I found is that the Sanyo's laser dub for this size of hook and fly is a little long. So I'll straighten these fibers out and align them. And then I'll go ahead and trim them in half. And then I'll stack them on top of each other again and realign the fibers. I'm still drinking coffee. Probably not good for uh, fly tying on video. But oh well. So I'm going to tie these in basically 60-40. So 60% of the length of the uh, dubbing is back and we've got 40% of the link pointing forward. Couple loose wraps, get that set in place. And then kind of firm it up a little bit with a few more wraps so it stays. Okay. Now I'm going to flip the fly over and we're going to do the top. The top is uh, Senyo's Laser Dub and Light Olive. Again, align the fibers. Go ahead and trim them in half. Same for the top, 60-40. Couple loose wraps and snug them up. Bring your, your thread to the front of both those stack dubbing. secure in front of it and then walk your thread up just about you're halfway between the eye and where the eyes are at so I'm gonna turn the fly over again so we're looking at the bottom the belly of the fly grab some more laser dub these I'm not gonna cut in half they look like they're okay so I'm gonna tie this in 50-50 loose wrap secure turn the fly over and now we're going to do the uh, the last stack so there's four stacks of dubbing on this fly I'm going to trim, they're a little long. So I'm cutting these in half again. Few more wraps secure it. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this back and then you're ready to tie off.
few half hitches, whip finish. So now I'm going to comb this stuff out. So I'm going to comb this stuff out to where it's almost sticking straight up. And then I'm going to start on the bottom first. And what I do is I'm going to trim this flat. So I'll rest both points of my scissors on top of the eyes. And I'll trim. So that's the bottom. I shouldn't have to really mess with that except for maybe a few cleanups here. And this stuff I'll kind of cut back at an angle. And once you get that done, I'll comb it out again. And then I'll kind of set this Senyo's laser dubbing in place with a little UV. This stuff's from Deer Creek. Light difficulties. Okay, so that's the finished fly pretty much. And then I'll take the uh, wherever it went. Take a brown marker and I'll color at the top of it. Don't dig your marker too far into this material because it'll just saturate and create a little bit of uneven spots. So I'll just kind of brush it lightly. And what that does too is it adds a mottled effect.
Brush that out again so it kind of blends in. And there's the finished fly. Alright, so there's the finished fly. If you guys like the pattern, uh, tie it up. Uh, fish it. Let me know how it works. Like I said, I haven't fished this one yet, but it's pretty much the same fly as uh, this wool head scope in here. Just change the materials. Um, again, the profile in the water looked really awesome. So I'm expecting uh, some good things out of this in March. All right. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe I'll do some more of these in the future. And enjoy. Enjoy.